So this is called weight loss, comma, the science. We'll see what that means. I've got a lot of studies here, and the reason I have the studies is because there's many people that are very analytical and they want to know not just the folklore of things, but they want to see a study. Mainly doctors like to do that, engineers, psychotherapists. They want to know that something has been studied and it's not just anecdotal. So you're going to see quite a few slides that at the bottom are going to have a person's name and then the name of a study, and then there'll be a reporter site it's like uh, 28 blah, 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 JAMA, and then give a date. Okay, so when you see those, you'll know what that means. So this is what we all go through, and I'm, I'm party to that. I had um, a slice of pizza yesterday, and I had a half a roll of my, my little girl's Girl Scout cookies. And I just went, this is splurge day for me. I don't care what I do. My splurge days are usually better than most people's regular days because my typical nutrition program is protein, vegetables, and water. I like to tease it. <laughs> So I'm going to say it again, protein, vegetables, and water. That means mostly I stay away from grain, dairy products, alcohol. Alcohol turns to sugar. Fruit. Fruit, that's healthy, isn't it? Yeah. How many people think fruit's healthy and perfect for everybody? Sugar. Right, the OSC at the end is like dextrose or glucose. It's a sugar. And as much as we need the nutrients from that, if we have problems with insulin resistance already or we're a little bit overweight, then that's something we need to stay away from because I'm going to get into this thing about how insulin is the very key to your nutrition, to your health, and to your longevity. And I'm going to give you studies on this that are going to show that you will live an extra maybe seven to ten years longer and in better health because length of life is nice, but unless the health span is really good, no one wants to be there. We don't want to live a lifestyle of decreasing health and then die. We want to stay as healthy as we can, like my father did, never sick a day in his life. Went to sleep, woke up in the morning and said, Dal, I don't feel good, and then went back to sleep forever. Okay? So that's pretty good. And um, he was a follower of Pritikin, Nathan Pritikin. They were best friends. And at about the age of maybe 65 after a heart attack, and him being obese and smoking and a lot of alcoholism, he cleaned up his act, and that gave him another uh, almost 30 years of life. Okay, So this stuff is real. Now this says, if you can't read it, I'm going to order a broiled skinless chicken breast. Got to get rid of that skin, right? Because it's fat, right? And fat's no good, right? Raise your hand if you think fat's no good. Oh, am I going to tease you around tonight? <laughs> But I want you to bring me lasagna and garlic bread by mistake. <laughs> because we don't have many pleasures in life. There's a few we all have. Some people have different ones. And food is high on the list for most people. Now, I have created my life in a way where food is a duty that I have to myself rather than an addiction. It took a while to get there because I was born a sugarholic. And I used to steal money from my mother's purse, edit that, and go to the school store every morning before school and buy candy. Okay? And I grew up like that. Twinkies, I loved it. I used to meditate a couple hours a day, and I would have a haagen pint of haagen next to the bed where I meditated, and that was my reward. I'd get up, it would be like a milkshake, and I would just drink it afterwards. <laughs> so I want to let you know I'm just like you are. Okay, I'm not any kind of special person when it comes to this. It's just that I've educated myself, and as I got a little older, like this nice lady was talking about after the age of 40, started putting on some weight, and I have a tendency to do that if I'm eating a lot of things that are what we call high glycemic, which we'll talk about. But what have I done? I've trained myself to be hungry. Sounds weird, right? I like being hungry because I know that is extending my life. I know that in our society we have plenty of everything. Things are going to change, maybe, with a new economy. We may actually get a lot of healthier. We are going to have more stress, but that's going to increase our metabolism. There will probably be less food to eat as time goes on. I'm not a pessimist about this. I'm a realist about it. And I think what's going on right now is very healthy for people in a certain sense. It'll bring us back to standards that we used to have where 
the parents ran the family instead of the little children. You know, it's going to be a different scene. So we all have this issue. What do I do before I go out to eat? Anyone know? But I'll typically have a handful of nuts or half an avocado before I go out to eat. So when I get there and I'm starving because they have me waiting, I'm not going to eat the loaf of bread because I can eat two loaves of bread. <laughs> if I'm hungry, I will eat anything because when I'm hungry, there we have a, hand, a raise of a hand there. When I'm hungry, I can't wait too long. I'm going to have to eat something because my energy drops very quickly. I get a headache. I start getting muscle pain and I get real cranky. So I'll reach for anything. So what do I do with that? I carry food with me everywhere I go. I have food in my car. I just ate right before I came here. I don't want to have a drop of energy when I'm with you. I want to be here for you. So what did I do? I had a steak before I got here. That's it. Just had a steak. That protein will keep me going for a long time. Protein like that stays in the gut for a long time. Some people don't like that feeling. They feel very full. But it doesn't it doesn't release very quickly through the bowels. So protein is something we should have pretty much at every meal to keep us going. And we'll get into all that also. So we're going to look at how much obesity is there, because there's an epidemic in this country. What are the causes of it? And then what are the conditions that are caused by obesity? Now, is there anyone here that would admit they're obese in this crowd? It's a funny word to say about yourself. Okay, we have a, a, a raise of maybe 20% of hands here. If we're actually to do a bone density or body fat analysis, what you do in my office, and by the way, everyone here gets a free bone density if they want to, and a free body fat analysis if they come in my office, okay? And I'll give you an example. When you get a bone density, we can have very large frame men or women who go, I don't need that. My bones are strong. I can bench press 300 pounds. And then we do this thing for them, and they find out they have osteoporosis, which is hormonally related. When the hormones go down, men go through andropause, which is no more pleasant than menopause, believe me. Uh, there's more hype about menopause, but men have the same thing. It just goes on a more gradual basis, usually. And then the other part of it is the body fat analysis. I've had many people in my office, many patients, who have over 50% of their body composition is fat. Now, you can't tell by looking at them all the time because it's a balance between lean muscle and fat. And sometimes people have big muscle. You know, they, have, they dress a certain way you can't tell. Um, someone like myself, you go, well, you don't have much body fat. I don't. But there are people that can look like me that have a very high percentage of body fat. So it's very uh, deceiving sometimes. So we have the gold standard. It's a GE lunar machine. You're all welcome to come and try it out. I think you'll learn an awful lot from that. It may be a shocker for some of you. It will be. It will be an absolute shocker for most of you, actually. So we'll look at the basics to long-term weight management success and the areas that cre create obstacles to weight loss. That's what it's all about, right? Because we're going to see data here about people who lose weight and then gain it back. We've all done that, haven't we? Yeah. This is alarming when I saw this, and I think it's going to alarm you also because it's a trend that's going on that is getting worse and worse. And like I said, the economic condition may reverse this. It actually may. Because I'm going to tell you something. Some of you have heard me say this before. Type 2 diabetes, which we get from being overweight, is an eating disorder. It is not a disease. It's one that we cause ourselves. Now, the type 2 diabetes is the one that usually sets in around age 50 or so. Anyone who's, who has that right now, they know it? Okay, so two people say they have it. And I'm going to guarantee that there's probably 10 or 15 people here who have type 2 diabetes who don't know about it. Okay, because it's very subtle testing I do to show it. This goes back to 1985, and you can see that these, uh, they're kind of, Lavender colors are the states where the percentage of people with body mass index greater than 30 or 30 pounds overweight for a 5 foot 4 woman. So it's kind of sporadic. It's not much. That's back in 85. Let's take a look and fast forward a little bit. This is 1995. And here it's the dark purple. And this goes even higher. 15 to 19% of people 
or obese.